fam, it's Alex Vanover, and welcome back to my craft room. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own glass block. So let's get started. Start by putting down some newspaper or other paper covering because this step is going to get a little bit messy. Remove the plastic cover over the opening of the glass block. Then grab something to adhere your glitter. I recommend using polycrylic. Then use a spoon or even a syringe to add a generous amount of polycrylic into the block. Just like making Christmas ornaments, begin tilting the glass block so you can see the milky texture is coating all the sides of the block. As the polycrylic moves towards the opening, tip and tilt it so that you can get polycrylic out of the opening and allow it to drip back into a cup or into the container. Leaving an excess of polycrylic inside the block will cause the glitter to look uneven when you add it into the block. So you want to remove as much as you possibly can before the next step. It worked well for me to allow the polycrylic to pool in the corners. Then I could tilt the block to get the polycrylic out of the opening more easily. Since it was taking a while, I held the block and rested it on top of a plastic cup while it was pooling. So that's an option too, but because of the shape of the opening, it will probably drip wider than a plastic cup. So I was really glad that I had newspaper down on the table because I definitely made a mess. The shape of the block does make this tricky, so this step will probably take longer than you expect. Repeat the draining process until polycrylic stops pooling in the corners so you can't get any more out. Just like with Christmas ornaments, I left the block upside down on a paper towel to drain out any last polycrylic out of the opening before moving on to the next step. Once the coating inside the glass block looks even, it's time to begin glittering the inside of your glass block. I am using Starcraft glitter and the color Oyster because I love the opaly tone to it. I recommend using a white or light colored glitter so you can see the fairy lights through them when it's finished. You can always add more glitter, so don't stress about having the perfect amount. Then rotate the block and allow the glitter to stick to the polycrylic. I then added a lot more glitter using the pour side of my glitter shaker, and the extra glitter provided much better coverage. As you need to move the glitter around, don't be afraid to smack the glass block with the heel of your hand to loosen the glitter and move it where you want it. When you get to the sides of the block that are hard to see, you may have to look in through the opening to see how the glitter is covering your block. When you get to the top side of the block where the opening is, try to get good coverage. Since it will be covered by a bow or other decor, don't stress about getting this side perfect. Once you mix glitter with polycrylic, it's going to clump together and change the consistency of the original glitter so I don't recommend adding any glitter back into the bottle. I personally throw away all spare glitter after projects like this because it becomes super clumpy and hard to work with. So the next step after adding glitter and polycrylic to your glass block is to set up the vinyl design that you wanna put on the front of your block. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a template that's the same size as my glass block so I can visualize what the design is going to look like. So to do that, I'm gonna to head to the basic shapes panel and insert a square into my canvas. Now the tag on my glass block says it's seven inches by seven inches from edge to edge. But in order to leave myself a little bit of margin for error, I'm going to make my template six and a half by six and a half, just so that I have like a quarter of an inch room on each side in case I misplace my vinyl. Then while it's still selected, I'm going to go ahead and change my template to like a light gray color. This is just going to allow me to see it a little bit more clearly um, as I'm working on my canvas. Next, I need to insert the design that I'm going to be using for this project. I chose a square farmhouse design that I will link the bundle for you guys in the description below in case you want to use the same one as me. Um, I really like using square designs on my glass blocks because I just think it looks a little bit better. But as you can see, we don't see it anywhere on our canvas. And this happens sometimes, so I want to show you guys um, how to find your SVG files if they get a little bit lost on your canvas, like mine do sometimes. So I'm going to bring this up to the corner, just so it's at the very top of my canvas. Now, I can select the SVG file, even though I don't see it, and Design Space takes me somewhere a little funky. What I can do to find it 
is go to more. And then I can see on position, it is for some reason at negative 18 by 10 on our grid here. So if you'll remember your days back in math class, if you set it to zero, zero, that will put it in the upper left-hand corner of the mat, which is where we are accustomed to cutting as Cricut users. So I'm gonna change the X and Y values to zero and click enter. And that takes us right to the corner. Now you can also see it's a bit big. So with it still selected, I'm gonna go ahead and make it six and a half inches to match my template. Something like that. Then I can begin arranging it on my template just to make sure that it's going to look really good when I cut it out for my glass block. Now, I mentioned earlier wanting to choose a square design, and that's because I think it's the best way to take up a lot of the glass block, make it look nice and balanced. I think that using like a rectangular shape that maybe only takes up the middle of the design, or even a circular design just leaves a lot of negative space of the block showing, and I like to have a little bit more covered. So that's just more of a personal preference thing for me, um, but I do think it's helpful to keep that in mind when you're choosing designs for different projects. Now, the vinyl I'm going to be using is the Red and Green Luster Vinyl by Style Tech. You guys, it is so gorgeous if you've never worked with it before. It just gives me all the fun Christmas vibes. So I'm going to change up this template here, um, or excuse me, the SVG file, so that it's red and green to match my vinyl. And we're going to change it to be only two layers. So now that I have this size for my template and I know that it's going to look good, I'm going to go ahead and hide my square by clicking the eyeball so it stays in my project, but I don't necessarily need to be actively working with it. Then I'm going to click on the SVG file and then ungroup it so that I can work with all the pieces individually. So I want to break up my sign so that it's about 50-50 with red and green. So I think I'm going to do um, jingle. So in order to select each of these pieces, I'm just clicking them. And then if I hold shift on my keyboard, I can continue clicking on all the parts and um, continue to keep the things that I've already clicked selected. So I'll click jingle and then hold down shift. I'll choose one of these bells and the word way. And then I think I also want to make these stripes. Um, red as well. So for all of the vertical and horizontal really skinny stripes, I want to hold down the shift key and I'm going to use my layers panel to select each of those stripes. That way I don't have to try to click them. And even though this design is all together, it's just a little bit difficult to try to click and get the right layer. So I like to utilize my layers panel for that. So then I will hold down shift again and click these last two stripes and then choose attach. Then I should be able to move that layer out of the way. I'll also go ahead and turn it red so that I make sure I cut it the right color. And I really like the way that that looks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that red layer that I just attached and scoot it out of the way. Then I will click and drag a box around everything. And it looks like I missed that stripe down there. So again, I'll hold down the shift key and click it so that it's selected. Then I'll attach all of this and it's already green, so we are good to go. Now, I want you to notice one thing that I did not do on purpose, and I did not weld these stripes so that they are gonna cut kind of around each other. And that is an intentional decision because I wanted to have a little bit more of like a three-dimensional realistic look. If I were to weld everything, you won't be able to see these individual lines moving through the vinyl, and I think it'll look a little bit more flat. So I am gonna go ahead and leave mine the way that it is, but of course you can weld everything if you prefer to have it all one all one cut um, and make it a little bit more simple. So once I have my design complete, next it's time to click the green make it button. And we'll double check on the prep screen that everything looks good on our mats. I'm gonna choose on a mat since I'm cutting with my Cricut Maker 3 and I'm not gonna be using smart materials. And each of my mats looks good. It's cutting exactly where I want it to and all of that good stuff. So next I'll click continue. And now it's time to choose my cut setting for my vinyl. I like to use the glitter vinyl setting, usually with more pressure for a lot of my style tech products that works really well for my machine. Uh, but you choose the cut setting for the type of vinyl that you're using that's going to work well for you. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this vinyl and weed it, and I'll meet you guys over at my craft table to finish assembling your glass block. But if you're a beginner and you're still struggling with skills like cutting vinyl and weeding it, I will link up my beginner tutorials in the corner of the screen, as well as in the description below, to give you some more help in case you wanna see that broken down and what that looks like. Okay, I'll see you guys over at my craft table. Now it's time to add a vinyl decal onto the front of the block. My decals are already cut and weeded, and now I'm just going to burnish the vinyl and transfer tape before lining up the decals. In order to place my vinyl decals exactly where I want them on the block, I'm going to use the parchment paper method. To work with the parchment paper method, start with a piece of parchment paper that's just a little bit bigger than your design. Stick the vinyl and transfer tape to the parchment paper, leaving a small strip of transfer tape above the parchment paper so that we can use it to anchor the design when it's ready. Smooth the vinyl and transfer tape onto the parchment paper with your fingers. I needed to make a few adjustments to my vinyl before sticking it onto the glass, so I took care of that before moving on to the next step. The parchment paper gives us freedom to move the vinyl around without committing to the placement right away. When you find the placement that you like, stick down the transfer tape strip at the top. Lift the vinyl and transfer tape to remove the parchment paper. Then slowly squeegee the vinyl and transfer tape down onto the block. When I removed the transfer tape, I had a few tiny corner pieces stay on the transfer tape. So I placed them using my stab and grab tweezers. Then repeat the parchment paper method for the green layer. You can really see how helpful the parchment paper is with the second layer because I can see the red layer through the parchment paper to ensure that the green layer fits perfectly into the design before sticking it down. Check out how amazing that shine is from the Luster Vinyl. If you want to try Luster Vinyl, you can save 5% by using my code ALEX5 if you decide to buy it at 143vinyl.com. The next step is to add fairy lights to the glass block. This step is super easy because there's not much of a process to it. Make sure that you have the plastic piece handy and double check that the lights work before putting them in the block. Grab the end of the fairy lights that's opposite of the battery pack. Then start pushing it through the opening and kind of bunching the lights up as you go. I keep these fairy lights on hand for everything, so I'll link them in the description below if you want to grab some yourself. When you get to the end, feed the rest of the lights into the block, then feed the battery pack through the slit in the plastic piece and add it onto the opening of the glass block. Then you can turn on the lights and see how pretty it looks. Lastly, the top needs to be decorated to hide the plastic piece. Many people like to use bows and those can be really pretty, but that's just not really my style. So what I did instead is I bought these two picks from Walmart and I made a couple of poinsettias out of felt to add to the top. All I did was angle the picks where I wanted them and hot glued the ends of the pick onto the plastic piece of the glass block. Be sure to let the hot glue set before moving on to each new piece. Then to hide the branches of the picks, I hot glued the poinsettias to both sides of the picks. Make sure you don't hot glue the cord of the fairy lights so that you don't damage them. And this also leaves the fairy lights free in case they ever need to be changed out. Once they're all set in the hot glue, you have a gorgeous glass block. If you haven't already joined one of my crafty fams on Facebook, I would love to have you be a part of them. So I'll be sure to link both of my Facebook groups down in the description below. And if you make anything using my tutorials, whether it's a glass block or something else, and you decide to share it out on Instagram, be sure to share it using the hashtag DIYAlex because I love seeing what you guys are crafting. And if you've made it this far in the video, then I would really love to get to know you on social media. So please be sure to find me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. I'll also put direct links to my profiles down in the description below.
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.